Hello. Hello, friends. Welcome to the 350 Seattle General Meeting, February. As you can see, I dressed for the occasion. I'll be your penguin host today. <laughs> uh, I realize I haven't worn this since Halloween. It smells a little weird. I'm sure you all wanted to know that. <laughs> like a penguin? Yes. <laughs> Thank you all for being here tonight. Um, I think people will still filter in, but since we kind of let people in a little, little bit late, I think I'm going to go ahead and get started with our welcome. Um, I'm going to start by saying welcome and thank you everyone for being here. My name is Shimona Moreno. I use she, her pronouns. Um, I work for 350 Seattle as the uh, movement building director and soon um, we'll be bottom lining our equity and inclusion projects. Um, I am calling in from the ancestral lands of the Coast Salish people and of the Duwamish tribe. Um, we begin our meetings uh, and gatherings with an acknowledgement of whose land we're on. Um, we do this to honor the original people who were here before us, who are still here fighting for their rights for our an and for the rights of our animal brothers and sisters and for the land. Uh, I invite everyone on the call to share in the chat um, their names and their pronouns um, and where and whose land they are on if you do know that. If you don't know, you can check out this link here that I'm going to copy and paste into the chat. where you can click on that link in the chat and you can find out whose land you're on. And you can also learn a little bit more about the uh, historical treaties that were signed um, and a little bit more um, about the tribes themselves. Um, I also want to specifically name the, like recognize that we specifically name the Duwamish tribe um, because to this day they are, they are not, they are still fighting to be federally recognized. Um, and that this is like decades long fight and one that they are um, really that we want to support. And in order to support the Duwamish tribe, I um, have this link here for you to check out um, where you can learn a little bit more about the Duwamish tribe, the fight that they are fighting um, and also pay real rent to the land because that was a uh, part of what would um, the Duwamish tribe would get if they were federally recognized. Um, and here's the link in the chat, because we also want um, as to pair action with our acknowledgements, um, not just like acknowledge it and then just like we go about our days. We want to make sure that we acknowledge and then act. Um, along with this acknowledgement, I want to say that it's Black History Month, y'all. And it is, I'm like really excited about this month because there's some really cool things happening um, in the world and in the country, um, specifically around like renaming it like Black Futures um, and talking about what it means to be um, Black right now in America and like what it means to envision what our futures as Black people it look like. And um, I'm especially inspired by this book called Black Futures. Um, written by Kimberly Drew and Jenna Wortham. I got this for Christmas and it's gonna be, I've been holding out reading it so I can read it this month, full of all kinds of beautiful content and pictures. I'm not getting paid for this, so, but I, I do support the authors. <laughs> um, and I encourage all of you to find um, artists, authors, musicians to support this month. Uh, maybe it's kicking them $5 to uh, their Patreon pages. Maybe it's supporting um, through like physical resources in our neighborhoods um, and uh, checking out local events as well, um, where you can see like on the Black Lives Matter calendar, they have a new link. Um, you have to update certain links and I've posted it in the chat. And also the Movement for Black Lives is doing a lot of really cool like events and, um, and videos on like Black Futures, the Black Futures projects. And so you should check out 
the movement for Black lives as well. Um, oops. They have this really cool video that they posted about that's like Afrofuturism and it is it's gorgeous and I suggest you all take a few like you know a few minutes of your time to check it out. Um, so thank you for that. I want to also just go over just a couple la Zoom logistics. Um, I just want to let people know that we are going to be recording this meeting. Um, if you do not want to be um, recorded, please uh, turn off your video. If you look on the right hand, left hand corner where you can stop your video. Um, and uh, we are, I would also like you all to make sure that you stay on mute when our speakers are speaking. Um, but if you definitely use the chat, if you have questions, appreciation, um, any comments, definitely feel free to talk in the chat. Um, and also just wanted to let you know that any of the like, I will follow up with all the links that we I've shared today in an email, hopefully by Friday, and any of the resources that might come out of um, the presentation tonight. Um, so yeah, I will. And if you have any tech issues or questions, feel free to direct message me. I, I should change my name. So it says Shimona. And I'll put tech in here so you know that I can help you. Um, so to help us like ground a little bit uh, further into this space, kind of get us like whew, down from all that talking, I'm going to toss it to Hillary, who's going to lead us in a song. Um, so Hillary. Hello. Hi, everyone. My name is Hillary. My pronouns are she, they, and I am coming to you representing the People's Echo tonight, um, which is if you're not familiar, we are a song collective here in Seattle. We sing for people and planet um, advocating for social and climate justice. I'll drop our SoundCloud link in the chat right there so you can go and actually listen to our recordings and learn a little bit more about us. You can also find us on the 350 Seattle page. And I'm gonna open us up with a bit of a throwback if anyone's familiar with um, the songs that we usually do, we're gonna uh, dive into Sound the Alarm. Um, show of hands, how many people have sung or heard of this song before? Cool. Um, I will put the lyrics in the chat here. If I can figure out my tech here. So yeah, this song is called Sound the Alarm and it kind of came out of um, the Youth Climate March and a lot of other stuff happening at that time. Um, there's, that should work, yeah, okay. So I will, um, we'll do, let's see. Shimona, what do you feel like we have time for uh, call and response teach first or should we just go straight to the recording? Yeah. Second option? Yeah. Okay, um, cool. So the lyrics are up on the screen and Shimona is going to play the recording so you can just kind of catch on. With our feet left, right. And we're going to start clapping on our left. So clap, clap. Sound the alarm, sound the alarm. Rising time to stand up to the flames. We are rising. 
up to the flames. Thunder, lightning, put it out just like the rain. Thunder, lightning, put it out just like the rain. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. Sound the alarm. to start with our feet. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much, um, Hillary. And we'll close out our meeting with a song and hopefully we'll have a chance to do a call and response then. Um, and with that, I would like to kind of introduce our topic for tonight. We are gonna be hearing from the 350 Washington Civic Action Team, CATS for short. I'm sure you've seen their delightful memes with the cutest little kittens um, to inspire you to get more involved with uh, the legislative session, Washington legislative session and policy. Um, and today we have with us uh, Grace Hope, Catherine Leggett and David Perk, who are gonna walk us through of like, What's the civic action team? What are they working on? How can you get involved? So Grace, take it away. Oh, okay. Thank you so much, Shimona. Um, my name is Grace. I use they, them pronouns. I'm down here in Tacoma in the ancestral lands of the Puyallup. Um, I organized with 350 Tacoma as well as 350 Seattle and 350 Washington and also 350.org. Um, I wanna just say that Shimona and I are also coming to you from the 350.org US retreat, which was pajama themed today, which we started in the wee wee hours this morning and we are uh, just deep in 350 spaces right now. So hence the matching pajamas. Um, I also wanna say that, wow, the last time I was at a 350 Seattle meeting was years ago in uh, 2019 in the summer, just ahead of the youth-led climate strikes, where my colleagues and I came and presented at our general meeting and we were all in person together singing, sharing meals. Um, I haven't been with the 350 Seattle general meeting community since then, and it's such an honor to be here. Um, and it's so beautiful to see a community um, finding ways to adapting from that beautiful in life space uh, to this virtual space where we still find ways to connect through our hearts and through actions. Um, it's just such an honor to be with your community tonight and I'm super thrilled to be talking about our civic action team. Um, we're gonna do our best to make the most of folks time. Uh, we know we probably can't get to every single policy question but we wanna leave folks feeling equipped, empowered, uh, with a sense of clarity and with a sense of excitement about how to engage in this campaign. Um, yeah, so ultimately we're just completely thrilled to have all of you folks here tonight to listen to our stuff. Um, David and Catherine and I are gonna spend a bit of time doing our best to paint the picture for you all. Um, yeah, and I also just, I'm gonna do my best to do this at a pace that feels good while making the most of folks time. Um, just want to honor everyone's energy in the space tonight. So Shimona, if you wouldn't mind, um, yeah, if you wouldn't mind doing a screen share of our slide deck. <laughs> okay, I really sort of love this one and we don't have to spend a lot of time on it, but these are all of the logos for the 12 different 350 groups in the state of Washington that are part of the network, uh, that are part of the campaign. Uh, so this is kind of just a fun little slide, but we can go to the next one. And I just want to give us a chance to just have a little peek at what our agenda is so that folks know what we're getting into. Uh, so welcome everyone into this conversation. I'm going to spend just a really brief time talking about like, what is the network and what is CAT? Uh, and then my colleague Catherine Leggett. Um, is gonna talk through just a little bit of like, what is going on with the legislative session this year? We all know it's super different because of COVID. Um, then we're gonna hand it over to our colleague, David Perk, who's gonna spend some time talking about 
kind of what is the 350 Washington Network and the Civic Action Team's overall um, policy priorities, and then maybe a bit of like kind of where are we at right now. Uh, we know that the legislative session moves a million miles an hour, and there's so many moving pieces. So um, it's nice to be able to have a, have little updates as we know them. But we also recognize that tonight's not the time where we're going to answer all the policy questions, but we hope folks have a clear view of what it is that we're advocating for. Uh, we're also going to spend some time um, learning, like, how can you all get engaged in the civic action team and what does that look like to be making an impact? Um, and then we'll spend some time closing with looking at some actions we can take together. A couple of specific volunteer needs that you all might be interested in stepping into in the campaign. Um, and yeah, oh yeah, and we will have questions and hopefully some answers, knowing that we won't be able to answer all questions tonight in our time together. Um, yeah, okay, so that's our, our overview. Um, and then maybe now, um, Shimona, if we could go to the next slide, we were kind of thinking it might be nice um, to just get a sense of the room and the folks in the space. Maybe some folks have tons of legislative experience and have been um, doing cat stuff for a while, we're going to do a little poll to get a sense of who's in the room tonight. And Shimona, during this time, you're welcome to come off of screen share if you'd like. Um, if we want to see faces during the poll, it's really up to you. All right, so hopefully folks are seeing on your screen just a couple of questions um, and feel free to answer them. Uh, and then, yeah, it gives us, ooh, this is so great. Folks are already um, casting votes. This is so great. Oh, and while cat folks are casting votes, I just want to say, Shimona, look what my Christmas present was. <laughs> we both have the same book, Black Futures. Uh, yeah, this is like, it's more than a coffee table book. It's so gorgeous. There's so, so much fantastic stuff in there. Oh, this is so great. We've got 23 of the 32 folks on tonight's call have already cast their votes. Oh, we're up to 27, 28. We're getting really, really close to having everybody voting. This is kind of fun. Twenty-nine, <laughs> and it's fine if not everyone wants to vote. That's fine too. We just want to give folks a chance. Uh, we are at ninety percent of folks who have voted. Shimona, how's that looking on your end? Sorry, I ended it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Executive decision. I like it, Shimona. Um, and then we can share the results. So are folks able to see the results of the poll on our screens? I see a thumbs up, couple thumbs up, awesome. Okay, so 11 folks here tonight have already done civic action team actions in past years. Amazing, we've got some seasoned veterans in this space, um, but at least 18 folks have never taken action in this campaign before. That's really great to know. Um, and at least 10 folks here tonight are actually volunteers in the campaign, so we've got some experts in the room as well. Um, but 19 folks are not involved with the campaign at all. And then um, we've got just about a 50-50 split. 15 of us, if we engage in the legislative session this year, this will be our very first time. And uh, I will admit that I am one of those people. I've just started learning how to do virtual lobbying in the last couple of months. I'm new to this space as well. Um, and and fifteen and fourteen folks have never uh, never engaged. So <laughs> maybe I said it backwards. But um, thank you so much, Shimona. I hope that felt illuminating for folks and kind of interesting to get a sense of our um, civic engagement experience and also uh, what is new for folks as well. All right gonna move this out of the way. Thank you so much, Shimona. Okay, folks. So I'm just gonna spend a little brief time painting the picture of what is the 350 Washington Network. Maybe we should have included a question in our poll, in our poll if anyone has heard of the network before. I'm assuming that lots of folks have, but maybe some folks haven't. Um, all of these orange hearts across the state of Washington represent an independent 350.org affiliated group. Um, and as of about just over a year ago, most of these groups did not know each other or really know of each other. And we're so, so thrilled that over the, the work of connecting folks in the last year, we've been able to form a network, uh, a formal network and a coalition out of all 12 of our groups. 
And the civic action team is our shared campaign together. We know that legislation is statewide and we can work together well statewide. Um, and so we're super excited about the work we're gonna be able to do together through this campaign uh, in ways that this, uh, the civic action team in the past was just a 350 Seattle campaign and now it sits with the whole network. Um, and so what does our network care about? Our next slide is our network's mission and values. And this kind of is where all of our, um, when we think about what is good climate policy and what are our legislative priorities, we're always reflecting back to our shared mission. And I'd wonder, um, Shimona, could I invite you to uh, read the 350 Washington Network mission so that folks have a sense of uh, what we're grounded in in our, in our purpose? Yes. The 350 Washington Network unites 350.org, local groups across the state to grow the global people-powered movement for climate justice. We organize for widespread systemic change that guarantees a healthy planet for all living beings. We do this work by working collaboratively to advance socially equitable and scientifically sound solutions to the climate crisis at the scale and speed necessary to mitigate harm. Thank you, Shimona. We spent a lot of time collectively across the 12 groups working on this mission. Um, and we're excited for the way this helps ground all of our disparate groups into one shared purpose when it comes to our legislative work together. Um, and ultimately we recognize that 350 and sort of the 350 brand has so much to do with grassroots advocacy and mobilization. That is what 350 groups do best. And so we're finding our space in the statewide landscape as grassroots activists. Um, and that's so much a big part of the identity of this campaign. Um, and you can go ahead to the next slide, Shimona. Um, so what do we do? We, with this campaign, we mobilize people across the state to raise their voices for sound and just climate policy in the legislative session. Sounds like not, not so much, but it's quite a lot. Um, you can go to the next slide if you like, Shimona. I don't know, maybe this, this graphic is like a lot to look at and some people really like graphics, so I'll just go over it really quickly. Um, but our model involves helping all those bills that get stuck in committees or that are sitting in committees. We can imagine that these are the really good climate policies we want to see passed. Our civic action team lets our whole action email list know twice a week exactly which bills, where they're stuck, how to uh, sign in virtually this session, as we'll go into in a minute, um, how to help move those bills through committees so that they're successfully passed. It's a slightly different model than regular constituent uh, lawmaker lobbying, and that's one of the reasons we really love the strategy behind this particular campaign. Um, we can go to the next slide, Shimona. Okay, so since the, camp since the session's already been going for four weeks, um, I wanna report back some numbers that we're really excited about. Last year, we made a total of nearly 6,000 individual actions taken at the during the legislative session to move those bills forward. So far this year, we've had 225 people participate in the campaign. Um, and because it's a virtual session, we have all sorts of new ways of engaging. It's not just emails and calls anymore. We already are over 1,600 people have signed in in support of bills, which is one of our key actions. We have nearly 1,000 unique emails sent to our legislators, 43 phone calls. And here's our smallest number, but one of our most important numbers, 12 lobbying meetings with legislators. This is our attempt at helping us deepen our relationships with lawmakers in Olympia so that we're able to affect more change. And we've got 81 days left in the legislative session. We've also grown our email list by a few hundred folks. And these are the folks we're asking to take those actions. So we're up to about 1500 folks so far. And with that, I would love to hand it over to my colleague, uh, <laughs> Catherine Leggett. It's been such an honor working with you, Catherine. Um, and Catherine's gonna just talk really briefly about uh, what is going on with the legislative session this year? What's different about it? Uh, and I'm gonna go ahead and drop the link to sign up to, um, for a civic mm -hmm. action team in the chat. 
Sure. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm sorry I'm not in my pajamas, but I practically am in my pajamas. So, um, so the lay of the land, you know, it sounds like maybe we have about half of the folks here tonight who have done some um, cat action before. And the, the main big difference is that it's all online. And that's kind of a big deal. You know, we've all adjusted um, to everything being online and the legislative session is just one of those things. So um, previously there would just be all of this hustle and bustle happening in Olympia, paid lobbyists, um, regular people attending public hearings and executive sessions. Um, there would just be a, a lot happening in Olympia and now that is entirely 100% online. Um, so that is the biggest difference. Um, what that means is going into the session, um, legislators were asked to actually bring forth fewer bills and, um, and actually bring forth bills in different ways, knowing that there would just be limited time to um, hear all of the different bills. So that's new. Um, I think that hearings themselves are um, taking a lot longer because so many people now are able to participate, which is a great thing. But now you have, um, you know, 100 people signing up to testify. And so it can take a really long time to actually get through the hearing. And they're working out these different uh, situations as the, as the session moves, moves forward. Um, but it does mean that we all can participate. So everything is online and uh, everything is recorded and you can always watch hearings after the fact if you're interested. Um, this is a long session, so it's 105 days versus 60 days. And the only thing that's required is to pass the budget. Um, it, the last day of the session is April 25th. And the, um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is that um, Washington State, like our country, is just going through multiple crises at once. And so there's a lot to figure out. And so the Democratic, the, the Washington Democrats have made um, COVID relief, racial justice, the budget and the climate crisis as their four priorities. And um, the, the civic action team is, is really addressing all of those except for COVID. We haven't really participated in bills specific to COVID. And then I will pass it back to you, Grace. Thank you so much, Catherine. Um, mm -hmm. And another big thing about the legislative session this year is that we're still learning how things are working. And like, because it's so new, uh, the first couple of weeks of the session were so much about, wait, how does this work? Uh, so it's really been a, an evolving learning process. And I just wanna give a huge shout out to our incredible civic action team, team our core team of volunteers who have been um, so beautifully adapting to this challenging session and doing our best to provide the best actions that make the biggest impacts in virtual Olympia. Yeah, so I'd love to hand it over to our colleague, David Perk, to talk a little bit about what are the civic action team's actual legislative priorities this year and what are some of the big, big bills and big things that we're working on. Um, also wanna recognize that um, we, we want to have a bit of a QA and a after, after David's able to talk about our policy priorities. Um, and there's probably tons and tons of policy questions that might not fit into tonight. Um, so do feel free to be dropping your questions in the chat. Hopefully we can get to them. Um, yeah, so I'm going to hand it over to you, David Perk. Okay, thank you, Grace. David Perk, he, him, here on Occupied Duwamish Land. Um, working with 350 Seattle, but in this case, 350 Washington CAT team. Um, so I'm not going to uh, sh share my screen separately, just leave us talking about this slide here with our priorities. But um, Grace, I'm gonna, I have a link ready, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop it in the chat. 
uh, and I've got a couple of them for this uh, part of the talk. So here's a link to that web page out on our website that describes our priorities. There are quite a few of them uh, covering the uh, areas that Catherine mentioned. There's a few that um, sort of stand up uh, above the others a bit more. And so I'm just going to uh, refer to my notes. So there's recovery budget stuff. This, this is not your typical climate stuff, but it's things like a capital gains tax or a wealth tax. There's also um, revenue in carbon pricing which is potentially really complicated. And uh, one of the carbon pricing schemes is really not something we want to support. The other one, we're still making up our mind, but lots of people are fans of it. There's a whole bunch of justice bills. And one of the things I'm pleased to be able to report is that work was done by legislators over the uh, fall, summer, fall, and winter to prepare a number of bills dealing with things like oversight and accountability, tactics and equipment, remedies for misconduct, community oversight boards, use of force investigations, and actually rules around the use of force. All of those bills are moving and they were ready to move early. So that's um, stuff that you're gonna hear about passing in the news. Uh, Real quick, the HEAL Act, that's about environmental justice. Some of you old timers might remember that from a couple of years ago. Now it's back for real. Um, that's moving, seems like it might pass. Uh, there's also bills to address growth management and transportation, cleaning up the fuel of vehicles. And then a couple of bills that we're very thrilled about. One of them is Clean Cars 2030 which basically says enough with internal combustion engines. We're ready for electric cars for everybody starting in 2030. All the new ones have to be electric. That would really draw a line in the sand. And there's stuff going on on the national uh, stage that would kind of uh, fit in well with that. So uh, amazingly, that seems to have a certain amount of uh, interest on the part of legislators. Um, and I'm going to drop into the chat in just a minute here, a uh, link to a page that kind of complements the, the list that I just, uh, the web page that I just gave you that has bill numbers for all this stuff. For those of you who maybe attended our kickoff and have been participating in the campaign. Um, another bill that we are a big fan of is Healthy Homes, Clean Buildings. This one is running into a lot of resistance. It's the idea that it's time to get gas out of new buildings starting in 2030. And the bill is um, kind of a set of different things and they're already starting to squeeze some of them out. But that would be one to uh, tell your legislators to support. And then there's a couple more that you'll see on this list but that I'm not going to uh, uh, speak to right at this moment but I am going to drop a link to the bill numbers into the chat here for those of you who are dialed into that kind of stuff. And I think that is enough in terms of giving the big overview, happy to answer questions or take a suggestion to speak a little bit more about a specific bill. Yeah, thank you so much, David. Uh, looks like we've got one great question in the chat. And folks, if you um, have a question or two for David around policy, feel free to either drop your question in the chat or an asterisk to say you want to go next. Um, David, thank you so much for that rapid overview. And I want to, I think maybe I'll add one more piece to that uh, in terms of the, the 350 Washington network. Um, as David mentioned, there's been a, a ton of work done to put together um, equity and bills together so that they were ready to go at the head of session um, dealing with the deep racial inequity in our state. Um, the 350 Washington Network, we've decided as part of our intersectional approach to addressing the climate crisis through sound policy, we've made the decision um, that we are going to actually be advocating for the racial justice policies um, and additional policies that are coming out of coalition spaces like Washington for Black Lives, um, understanding that the, 
the climate crisis and racial justice and climate justice are not separable and we, we advocate for them together uh, as part of the transformational change we need to see in the world at a policy level. Uh, we're really, really proud to be able to advocate for these policies as part of the civic action team with our work and recognize that the 350 Washington Network sees those connections as well. Uh, so that's something I'm really proud of in this work too. Um, and so David, we've got a question from Eric Ross. What is the timeline for creating new bills? I know there's a February 15th deadline for new legislation. It would be so awesome to create a community power bill, something that Inslee wouldn't veto. Oh, um, boy, that's a good one. And that reminds me that the list of bill numbers that I dropped in probably doesn't have the bill number for that particular bill. Catherine, Community Solar, do you want to go find that someplace? I don't know if we're going to get it before, sure. in a timely manner, mm -hmm. but that bill exists, the very one that Eric is uh, referring to. And it is completely redesigned and it's intended to be veto proof because it doesn't require money to implement it. That's my understanding. I can't speak to the details too much more than that. In terms of creating new bills, it's true, February 15th is the deadline for introducing new bills um, with this one loophole that bills that are necessary to implement the budget, those can show up anytime right to the very end and sometimes do um, as they work that stuff out. But yes, we're coming up on the closure. I think it's around week five and a half where they stop letting new bills onto the into the process. And then from then on, it's like a rock tumbler of just moving the bills through committees and floor votes and the other chamber and more committees and bills die along the way as they felt fail to reach any kind of consensus. Awesome. Thank you, David. And we've got a um, couple other questions in the chat. Um, I was able to answer and just question. Yes, we are official sponsors of the Washington Can't Wait campaign. So organizationally, we're signed on to that campaign. Um, and Eric also has a follow-up question about adding an amendment to community solar. Um, and then we've got a, a question from Mallory as well. Gosh, Eric, you know, send me that amendment and I'll see if we, if we can find someone to uh, propose it or uh, get in touch uh, through uh, the, through info at 350 Seattle or info at 350 uh, wa.org and um, we'll talk to you about that. Awesome. So we've got a couple more questions in the chat. Rank um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, rank choice voting. I just, uh, I've heard that that is really a cool thing. I've heard that that bill has been introduced. We have not had that on our radar. Um, maybe we should. So thank you for that bill number. I'm copying that out of the chat. Yes, and there's the um, Community Solar Program 1046. Mm. And I think we've got time for, um, I believe there's one last question in here from Jim about the issues surrounding the Washington Strong Bill and when 350 Washington will dis decide. We'll decide <laughs> on a, supporting that's it. That's a <laughs> million dollar question right there. <laughs> Um, I would say that both 350 Seattle uh, and 350 Washington are, are um, thinking about that bill, although uh, honestly on slightly different timelines. So you're more likely to see, Grace, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think you're more likely to see a decision come from 350 Seattle than from 350 Washington, which by, uh, by necessity has to uh, consult with 12 groups. So it takes a little bit longer. Um, in terms of Washington Strong, uh, one of the things that my understanding is from other members of 350 Seattle, we're watching to see whether groups like Puget Sound Sage, Got Green, and Front and Centered come out in support of that bill. Uh, Front and Centered has expressed support. The other two groups have not. Uh, the bill does involve, quote unquote, a market solution in the sense that um, issues bonds against a tax. Uh, there was concern that the that Washington Strong would include offsets, which would be a red line for those groups. The currently introduced version of that bill, 5373, 
does not include offsets. Um, so that's a good sign, but uh, wheels are turning to try to figure out whether we're gonna take a pro or neutral position on that. Thank you so much, David. And I'm really, really appreciating these um, questions in the chat as well. Um, oh, thank you so much, Catherine, for that. I didn't, I didn't quite um, check on this with Catherine and David ahead of time, but I, I think it's worth mentioning that we meet weekly as a um, core campaign team, uh, as well as with local group leaders in the network um, and the volunteers who are holding this campaign. And that's where a lot of this really emergent bill information is coming uh, and conversations are happening. Um, so that's a that's a kind of weekly container space for our campaign um, and not necessarily like a huge open space, but as ideally if folks are um, interested in volunteering the campaign, that would be an open space for folks to be engaging in those conversations. Um, and yes, we are doing our best to sort of sit in the statewide climate alliance well, to be paying attention to our community partners and to truly be advocating for policies that are sound and just. Um, and so it's on us as a civic action team to do our duty um, to pay attention to what all these different voices and different partners um, are saying about this, these bills um, and doing our best to be strong advocates for good policy. You know, I was kind of thinking that I would like do this cute little chart about what is the campaign, but I, I feel like maybe <laughs> now would be a great time for us to stop talking at you just for a minute. Um, and, and maybe we could just take, take a moment where we take some action. We know that the civic action team, we are, um, we are standing with, um, what's a good, what's the right way to say this? Sorry folks, I've been up since 4.30. <laughs> we are advocating for opposing the cap and trade bill that's currently been proposed um, as, um, as a response to Puget Sound Sage, Front and Center, Got Green and others, opposition to this bill on equity concerns. And so one of the actions that we had thought that folks might be interested in taking tonight is actually contacting their own legislators through the website in a really, really simple way um, that we can all do together just really quickly and say, yes, we stand, um, we stand with these communities in opposition of this bill. And we've heard from lots of spaces that this is not a great bill uh, for a couple of key reasons. Um, and so Shimona, I'm kind of thinking slide 16 is the very, very last one. And that's the one that has- um, I can drop something in the chat. Oh yeah. Okay. Actually, I just grabbed it. Um, so if folks are feeling like Okay, I'm kind of tired of being in this meeting and I would like to take an, the, the ad and cat, the action. <laughs> you are welcome to follow that link. And David, maybe you can just say a bit of how, what, what folks can expect when they click on that link. Oh, uh, that link takes you to a form, which doesn't look like it tells you anything about the bill. So uh, you can check the name, uh, 5126. I think it said, it does not say cap and trade, maybe it says something slightly uh, longer, but this is the Climate Commitment Act uh, that Governor Inslee put forward uh, that is sponsored by Senator Reuven Carlisle that has a cap and trade uh, program. To be fair, they claim that they are trying to fix the mistakes that California has made, but I've heard some critiques of it from people who really get into the details and even if that were true, it still needs a bunch of work. And like Grace was just saying, California has done a really bad job uh, with their cap and trade um, plan, their program. Uh, frontline communities have not seen a, re a relief from pollution and the cap and trade system by design, in addition to being uh, large and bureaucratic and cumbersome and market-based favors corporations and the fact that someone like British Petroleum would be in favor of this bill seems to really explain why corporations would be into it. Um, and so, yes, we completely agree with Sage, Got Green, front and center, that this is really not the kind of way to address the climate crisis. And uh, by filling out this form, you have the opportunity to tell your senator and both of your representatives all at the same time, 
your thoughts on um, that bill and what they should do with it. Thank you, David. And as folks are um, potentially taking that action and filling out that form, I did drop a couple other quick actions in the chat, if that feels fun. One is just a simple sign up to be receiving our weekly emails. Um, and um, the other one is we made a really cute amplification toolkit that you are welcome to use on social media or even if you like to send emails to your friends. I don't know if people do that. Um, that is where the kitten meme lives and where new kitten memes will be born. And so if you're always checking that document, we're doing our best to update it with our stats and how's the campaign going. Um, a really important piece of engagement here is folks reaching out to their friends and community members and saying, I'm taking civic action during the week Here's a simple way for you to do it too. And just a really quick recap, the slides I skipped, which I think are totally fine, um, in case folks are a little bit unclear about what our campaign actually is. Our campaign, as David Perk so eloquently put in an analogy a couple weeks ago, we are a publishing house that is doing our best to pay attention to all the best climate policy out there, where it is at any given moment in any given week, what's happening with our partners, and then we curate twice a week, a very specific email that you'd receive in your inbox with a link to a survey monkey. And it very simply walks you through a few advocacy steps you can take that day. The survey monkey records your actions. So we're collecting our collective data and we are uh, racking up really great numbers as we are taking action together. So if you sign up to the campaign, that's really what you're signing up for. Um, and you don't have to do them all, go for it, David. And on that survey monkey form, there are several places where we invite feedback in terms of like, oh, ran into technical problems or ah, spoke to a legislative assistant. And this is what we heard. Mm, just saying. Yeah. And Catherine, did you have something to add as well? Yeah, I was just going to say that, um, you know, there's always the question, well, is this really going to do anything? Is this really effective? And I think the answer to that is collectively, yes, this is effective. And, you know, in the past, we have made more phone calls. And um, that was sort of, you know, the CAT program was just like literally picking up the phone and calling legislators and, and legislative aides. Um, but now with the virtual session, actually, we're using the website more and more, and we're hearing that back in hearings. For example, the Healthy Homes, Clean Buildings um, hearing, uh, Representative Ramel, who um, sponsored that bill, mentioned that there were um, 1,900 people who had signed in to that hearing. So, you know, these numbers do mean something collectively. Thank you, Catherine. Yeah. Um, well, this our time is just flying by together. I hope this has felt generative and has uh, answered some questions for folks as well. I want to lift up a comment in the chat from Sarah McDonald. Um, Sarah, I hope you're okay if I read your comment, recognizing that there are folks here in this call who are participating in the campaign, um, who are getting those survey monkeys. Sarah says the emails and survey monkey are really terrific. Thank you for doing all that work. It makes it so easy for me to act. Um, I love that feedback. Uh, and I hope that's the experience for everybody. Um, as we're kind of wrap, oh, go ahead, David. And I drop one more thing in the chat. There is a lobby day uh, coming up. Yes. And I remember, yeah, I remembered to go get that. Thank you so, so much. In the past, um, in the past, uh, you might see it. Uh, I'm getting a little nostalgic here. So there, as you kind of surf around looking for legislative stuff on the on the internet, uh, you see all these photographs of crowds of people standing with, you know, keep it in the ground signs on the steps of the state house, and th those pictures are typically taken at lobby day. This year, that's not going to happen that way. I, so we're going to have a gap in those kinds of pictures, unfortunately. But it's this event instead. And I've signed up, but I haven't read my acknowledgement email yet, so I don't know exactly how it works. But they're going to start hooking everybody up with their legislators. And crews of people will be in Zoom meetings with their legislators. And I gather some legislators are kind of treating it like a town hall. Um, so it's a great place to ask questions or 
express the need for them to support a particular uh, bill that you're an advocate for. That's all, thanks. We'd love to be able to talk to you all for hours and hours about this campaign as David and Catherine and I are up to, have been up to our eyeballs in it for a long time. I also wanna say with huge gratitude, thank you all for your generosity of listening um, and engaging tonight on your night. Uh, these, this is what we do in our spare time, right? But together, um, just huge gratitude to everyone who's on the call tonight. Um, I wanna invite us to take a collective breath as we did our best to give you the information and tools that we, we feel might be relevant and recognize we can't cover it all, but we welcome you to reach out to us and keep engaging with our campaign. Um, I'm gonna hand it over to Shimona to help close us out in a really good way and hopefully send us all um, off on our evenings. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, CAT team. Um, it's so amazing to see all the work that you guys have done um, and working so hard, especially I know how tricky this uh, legislative session is. I, you know, am amazed at all that, that you are doing. Um, and thank you everyone for listening through all of that. This is a beautiful presentation. Um, I'm gonna close this out. I'm gonna hand it over to Hillary to close this out with a song. Um, and I will make sure to get all of the juicy resources that we saw in the chat um, and in slides and also the recording um, to everyone and a follow up by Friday. Um, and I think that's it. So thank you. I'll pass it to Hillary to lead us out with some. Yay. Awesome. Well, I think I have a really fitting song to fit what we just were talking about um, as we're kind of asking these questions of like, how do we do things? How do we fight um, all these different systems of oppression that we're, we're up against? Um, so it's really great to hear um, all the great work that's being done, um, especially around social and climate justice this session. Um, I just dropped the lyrics in the chat. Um, we'll do a quick little call and response since it's pretty short and then Shimona will play the recording. Um, but it's pretty easy. This song is called How. Um, so there's a little part here. I'll do both so you can just kind of um, go with me there um, when I do the, the call and response. Uh, so the first part goes, oh, tell me how. You want to try that? Oh, tell me how. And then the next one is to bring the fire. Yep, to bring the fire, to build a movement to build a movement, to fight for justice, fight for freedom from oppression, to fight for justice, fight for freedom from oppression. And then in the recording, you'll hear a little, oh, tell me how, and it just keeps going and going. Um, so yeah, Shimona, you can play the recording. And thanks everyone. so much everyone it was so good to see well some of you i saw <laughs> on video um and 
I will look forward to seeing you guys pop up in other places and hopefully next month's meeting. Um, little little preview, we'll be talking about what's going to be coming out of the Seattle for a Green New Deal space. So look forward to that in March. We've got some cool stuff cooking up. So everyone go forth and have a beautiful night.